I guess this is normal now. By My Lost and Found. Read by My Lost and Found. Summary. Izuku Midoriya had a normal life. Well, until his diagnosis, anyway. Then, everything changed. He was not expecting one of those changes to be getting kidnapped on the regular, but at least he made a friend. Chapter 1. You Always Remember Your First Time Summary. Izuku gets kidnapped at the ripe old age of five. At least he has someone to walk him through this new normal. Izuku Midoriya's life was anything but textbook. Most people had two loving parents. Most people had a quirk. Most people didn't get kidnapped on the regular. The first time Izuku was kidnapped was at the age of five. The day started off normal. It was a weekend, so he went to play in the park with Kachan, Tsubasa, and Tasaki. But they were being extra mean that day. So Izuku snuck off to play alone in the woods. Kachan was amazing, and he was Izuku's best friend, but sometimes... Sometimes Izuku needed a break. So there he was playing with an All Might figure when a shadow washed over him, and the next thing he knew, his head felt all funny, and he was slipping into unconsciousness. When he opened his eyes next, he wasn't met with the lush green forest he had been expecting, but instead a dull, dark room. It was cold. Izuku could feel the cold concrete seeping the heat from his bones from where he lay. Sitting up slowly, Izuku was met with the sight of an adult on the floor next to him. She looked like she had just woken up from a bad nap, shoulder-length orange hair tussled with bedhead. But she looked calm, a little annoyed if anything, like this was just another Tuesday. Izuku, on the other hand, was starting to freak out at having woken up in a strange place with a strange person. Before Izuku's panic could fully set in, the young woman's amber eyes slid over to him. She appeared to startle at the sight of him next to her, calm morphing ever so slightly into worry for a split second before a calming smile fixed itself on her face. Hi there, she started, voice quiet and soft. My name is Akakitsune, but you can call me Aka. When you're in places like this, don't use your family name, okay? Okay, Izuku replied. My name's Izuku. I'm five. The woman, Aka, smiled sweetly at him. Nice to meet you, Izuku. I'm twenty-two. How are you feeling? Dizzy at all? Izuku frowned at the question. He was a little dizzy now that Aka pointed it out. His head felt kind of funny. Why did his head feel funny? Before he could get lost in his thoughts, he turned himself back towards Aka. I'm a little dizzy, but it's getting better. By now, Aka had pushed herself to her feet, so Izuku followed her lead. She seemed like she knew what she was doing. It's good you're feeling better. Now, Izuku, do you remember how you got here? Izuku frowned again. He was doing that a lot today. He didn't even know where here was, let alone how he got here. But then, a memory flitted through his head. The... the shadow in the forest! He felt funny then... fell asleep? Wait, did he get kidnapped? Tears were already starting to bud in his eyes at the realization, but Aka was quick to crouch down next to him, taking his small hands in her own. Shh, it's okay, Izuku. Nothing bad is going to happen. I'll help you, okay? He nodded shakily before sitting back down. With a sigh, Aka followed him, hands still intertwined. This kind of thing is just a part of life when you're quirkless. It doesn't happen too often, maybe once or twice a year, but it's part of life. Izuku is slightly shocked. This was normal? He didn't need to be scared if this was normal. That meant a lot of people dealt with this, and so could he. People like him. But 
how did she know? How did you know I was quirkless? He questions. She gives a bit of a sad smile. Well, that's simple. We have the same shoes. Akka moved, shuffled her feet right next to his, and sure enough, they had the same shoes. That was cool. They matched. Izuku didn't understand why she seemed a little sad. All quirkless people wear this kind of shoe because there's only one company that sells them to fit the extra toe joint. That was awesome! Now he would be able to tell if someone was quirkless like him. But that also meant that other people would be able to tell he was quirkless, not just other quirkless people. Okay, maybe he understood why she was a little upset. And it was either you were quirkless or had some strong or scary quirk. Those are the kind of people who deal with these things on the regular. At that, Akka petered off, scanning every inch of the barren room they were in. Izuku didn't know what she was doing, but it looked like she was focusing really hard, so he kept quiet. After a minute or two, she spoke up again. Okay, Izuku, we're going to play a sort of game now. Izuku's head tilted like a confused kitten. <sighs> Okay, okay, how to word this, she muttered under her breath before speaking up again. Do you like heroes? In response, he nodded emphatically. Of course, what kind of question was that? Asuku was getting excited about what type of game they were going to play. That's good. Do you know about underground heroes? Underground heroes? Asuku's never heard of those before. Was that a different type of hero? He really wanted to get out of here so he could look them up on the internet. Uh-huh. Underground heroes. They're kind of like secret agent heroes. They need to be really stealthy and smart to take down villains. Most people have never heard of them. They're that sneaky. Azuku was practically vibrating with the new information. That was so cool! So the game we're going to be playing is like being an underground hero. We've been captured and we're on a mission to escape undetected, okay? Akka got an enthusiastic nod in response. Now, I've done this plenty of times before, so I'm prepared, but you need to pay close attention. Think of this as your initiation into the game, because remember, this isn't the last time you're going to have to go on a mission. and. I won't be there next time. Izuku is a little nervous. What if he forgets something? This whole thing is kind of scary, but Akka is nice. He trusts her. If she says she can do this, she can do this. It's just up to Izuku to pay attention and learn for next time. So he settled in to learn all he could. Okay, so first things first. This is a stealth mission. So we have to be very quiet. The best way to escape is to get out unspotted. Azuku watches closely as Akka slips a few fingers into her right shoe and pulls out... A lockpick? Guess she really meant it when she said she was prepared. Lockpicks. A necessity when it comes to missions. I learned by looking up how-to videos online. You should always have a pick on your person. I recommend having it in your shoe, because first off, I never have my shoes taken when I'm kidnapped, and secondly, you'll always be wearing those shoes. It's not like anything else fits. Izuku nodded resolutely, fingers itching for a notebook to write this all down. Akka set to work on the lock while she talked. So, this time they just locked the two of us in a room, but sometimes they'll tie you up with rope or zip ties. Which is why must-have number two is some sort of pocket knife. I have one in my other shoe and one in my jacket. You probably notice that this room doesn't have any windows, which is smart on our kidnapper's part. One of the best ways to escape is through windows, though you're small enough that vents would work. Not having to walk through a building is always nice, because the most hazards are when you're on their turf. The lock opened with a soft click, and Akka was pulling open the door. 
They stuck their head out for a moment before leading Izuku out into a dimly lit hall. Whispering even quieter somehow, Aka continued, One thing to watch out for here are cameras. Now, I don't see any, but they're always important to keep in mind. After that, the duo fall silent, slipping through the various hallways until they come across a window. It's not locked and opens without resistance to reveal a two-story drop. But just right of the window is a closed dumpster. Okay, we're going to aim for the dumpster. Action movies may have had you believe that open dumpsters are better, but they can be littered with sharp things like broken glass and knives. Well, most dumpsters don't have knives in them, but the kind of people who are into human trafficking just so happen to fall into the demographic of people who have knives in their dumpsters. Most of the time, though, there isn't a conveniently placed dumpster, so learning to fall properly should definitely be on your to-learn list. Speaking of lists, remind me to actually write down a list of things you need to learn when you're out of here. Azuku is going to jump first, and he's a little nervous. Even with the dumpster, it's pretty high, and this is the kind of thing he needs to use for future missions. For now, he'll be thankful for the conveniently placed dumpster. But just as Izuku is about to drop, he hears a shout from the hall. He whips his head around just in time to see a knife embedded into some man's hand, and Akka's arm is still outstretched from where she threw it. With their stealth compromised, Akka quickly ushers Izuku out the window. The fall is sloppy, but nothing is broken. And then, they're off into the night, heart pounding and head racing from what he just saw. They run for quite a while, Akka checking behind her shoulder every so often. At one point, she even picks him up to gain a little more ground, but eventually, they come to a stop in an out-of-way alley. Izuku is still in shock. He had barely heard the man approaching before he saw the knife gruesomely lodged into his hand. It looked painful, and it was kind of scary. Akka, what? What was that? The grimace on her face made Izuku feel a little more relaxed. So she does not enjoy impaling people. Good to know. Sorry you had to see that, Izuku. It's just that sometimes, when sneaking doesn't work, you have to fight. And me? I fight by throwing knives. It's not the easiest to learn, but I like the distance it gives. You'll need to learn how to defend yourself eventually, but I'd say wait a few years before trying to pick up knives. Some basic self-defense should be good enough for now. Okay. Yeah, he could do that. Zuku's lingering anxiety didn't go unnoticed, and soon enough, the two of them were eating ice cream in a small parlor. Akka insisted that they had to celebrate Izuku's first completed mission, so he was enjoying some mint chips while well, she had mango. She was also going back over everything she told him, while writing it down. Now that they had escaped from wherever they were, Izuku was actually kind of excited. The idea of going on a mission alone was still scary, but it was also really cool, just like an underground hero. At one point, Akka needed to double-check something, so she reached into her pocket to pull out her phone. And... Izuku was confused. Aka, if you had your phone, why didn't you call the cops? He questions. Well, a couple of reasons, she says, turning back to Izuku. First off, it's faster to escape on your own than wait for the cops. And when you're about to be late for exams, it's better to just get yourself out. Second, Sometimes they do take your phone, so you can't always rely on calling for help. And lastly, sometimes, when they learn you're quirkless, your priority is suddenly less than a kid's cat who got stuck in a tree. It's just not worth it to call. Izuku furrowed his brow. The cops wouldn't help because he was quirkless? He thought the cops were supposed to help everyone. Well... He used to think teachers were supposed to help all their students, but that wasn't true. So he couldn't ask cops for help. He had to be strong enough to do it all on his own, 
or with help from other quirkless people. Or maybe those people with scary quirks Akka talked about. If they got taken too because people didn't like their quirks, maybe they wouldn't care that he's quirkless. By the end of their ice cream date, Izuku has a full page of homework, as well as one of Akka's pocket knives. She walked him back to the park and bid her goodbyes. He hadn't been gone too long. No one might have even noticed he was missing. But when he wandered up to his mother, she breathed a sigh of relief at the sight of him. Asuku, where were you? I've been calling you for the last ten minutes and you weren't coming. Now, Izuku has to make a decision. Should he tell her what happened? That he was actually missing for the past hour or so? He didn't want to worry her. Akka made it seem like it wasn't a big deal. It was just something that happened to people like him, and she didn't need to worry. She already worried about him too much. Plus, she didn't have a scary quirk, nor was she quirkless. Akka made it clear that other people wouldn't, or couldn't, help. So, he lied. Sorry, Mama. I saw a really pretty butterfly that I followed, but I got a little lost. I I'm okay, though. After that, Izuku spent his free time training and researching underground heroes. He had no idea that they were so cool. And Akko was right. Their missions were a lot like what underground heroes did. All Might was still his favorite hero, but after researching all the underground ones he could find, a Reekser head became a close second. His quirk was so cool, but more importantly, he fought quirkless. Just like Izuku. Training is surprisingly fun to the Greenet. He was able to convince his mom to buy him a lock-picking kit. It required a good amount of begging and some excuses about it being for hero practice, but he got it. Izuku looks up the videos, Akka told him, and he's able to pick the practice locks in no time. Izuku is half looking forward to his next mission and half dreading it. He wants to test out all the new skills for real, but... He's worried he won't be able to escape alone. He's really hoping that there will be another quirkless person to help him. He'd love to meet more people like him, especially cool ones like Akka. Or maybe he'll meet someone with a scary quirk. Though how a quirk can be scary still escapes him. He just hopes that he's not alone the next time he gets taken. Okay, so after, <laughs> this is the one I talked about in the extracurricular activities video, the one that I was inspired to write, the, like, one that's soup, the part that's super close to what they had is in, like, the second part of the series, but some people asked in the comments for me to podfic my, the series that I had written for this, and I wanted to get another chapter out for it, so I did that, and here I am. I'm gonna be podficking the whole series as it is right now, which so far it's four parts, two of them which are completed, because they're just split into different, like, I guess time frames or different themes, but the main aspect is <laughs> Azuku gets kidnapped a lot and it's a casual thing and some of it is crack but it's like crack treated seriously for most of it but yeah this first part is a two-parter as you probably saw by the thumbnail um about the early days or <laughs> Azuku's first and second kidnapping then the next part is the one about the Lord League of Villains, and that's a three-parter, but, like, the third chapter is really small, so I'll, like, a group two of them together when I post. Then the third one is just has two chapters right now. It's, like, specifically about All Might being quirkless and what that means for him getting kidnapped, that kind of thing. And then the fourth part is just uh, more miscellaneous kind of things from when Azuku was younger and getting kidnapped. It has three parts right now. So I'll be doing those and whenever I update the series, I'll, you know, podfic that eventually as well too. So I hope you guys like like this. Uh, yeah. Uh, goodbye. I'll see you next time.